So people sometimes come up to me and ask me this question, you know, Kenny, why do you fight so much? Why do you care so little about social status and you go and do unpopular things? And sometimes people say this with admiration and then sometimes people say this as a way to criticize me. And the answer is always the same. Um, the answer for me is always the same. It's always been what's motivated me. But I want to turn you back to this, one of the most famous preachers of all time, preaching one of the most famous sermons of the modern age. His name is John Piper. He's an evangelical pastor at a mega church. And this is, I think, the story, the sermon that probably catapulted him most to fame. And it's entitled, Don't Waste Your Life. But there's this one analogy that he makes in this sermon, which was delivered in 2000, the year 2000, where he brings up this seashells analogy. And I just want to put this analogy through, through to you guys. So there is this woman, and this, he, he, he starts off with this premise. There is this woman, this 85-year-old who dies in Cameroon, missioning, missioning to people gets killed and dies. And people say, oh, what a tragedy. But then John Piper asks the crowd of 40,000 people, do you think this is a tragedy that she died serving God, that she died missioning to these people? And the entire crowd goes, no, no, no. And then Piper says, yes, you're absolutely right. And he pulls out this one piece of paper and he says this is a tragedy and he proceeds to read this piece of paper and this piece of paper says this couple this uh this couple decided to retire early at the age of 59 and they live in their nice house in south Be in south florida beach and the husband plays golf and the woman um, watches TV and every so often they would go onto the beach and they would collect shells, seashells. And he proceeds to look up from that piece of paper and he says, men and women, this is a tragedy. I was impacted by that sermon. That sermon, one of the most famous sermons ever, impacted so many people across the United States, and it still doesn't fail to register in my heart. How we live in a culture of comfort. How people care only about their 401k, if they're an adult. If they're a college student, they care only about their grades. They care only about achieving the best job, possible job to live, the best, have the nicest house to get the best wife or husband to have the best kids and then have the best retirement. This is supposedly the end goal in this situation that we call the American dream. And you know what John Piper says to that? He says, that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. And you know what he says after that? He says this, don't waste your life. Ask me this question and they say, you know, Kenny, you, you, why don't you just stop? Why don't you just stop what you're doing? You know, go be a normal person for once. That's impossible with me. Because I've taken, I've internalized this sermon to heart. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your life. And that's possibly been my biggest propulsion to campaigning, to fighting for whatever you believe in, politics, faith, faith before politics, faith, politics, um, your beliefs, your guide. God has commanded us to a higher level of existence where we don't live for material comfort, but where we live on the basis of doing something with your life, helping the poor, doing something, impacting people. It's funny because this sermon was entitled The Seashells Sermon by the entire Christian blogosphere. 
at the time that it was delivered because the most powerful analogy was that of those seashells, right? Because the idea is when that couple that I just referenced goes back up to heaven, meets God at those pearly gates, and God says, man and woman, what have you done with your life? And they have no answer except the man can pull out from his pocket and says, hey God, I have a great seashell collection. That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. We have to live our lives with impact in mind. We have to live our lives with other people in mind to make this world a better place. That's why I do what I do. That's why I exhort you to do the same.